guys, I swear, I just walked in to buy a three dollar comic. That's all I meant to do. That's all I meant to do. Saving money. You know, got some things going on. I need a tire for my car. You know, but I'm weak. I'm weak because I was in the moment. Uh, went to comic book shop just to pick up Five Ghosts number five, and uh, that's a three dollar book. You know, maybe get a dollar book or something. Not spending a lot this month. I bought a bunch of comics. And uh, as I was going through, look right there, after looking at the comic book boxes, I kind of looked over here to my right, and I saw a stack of stuff, and I started talking, and ended up buying it. So I'm going to show you this, um, I don't know, 80s goodness here, I guess, like that, which I hope to make my money back on eBay because I still can't believe I did it. Oh, found this, and. Uh, Basically, for you guys that don't know, this came out in 1984. This is the Marvel Super Heroes heroic role-playing game uh, with an adventure in it called uh, Day of the Octopus, put up by TSR Games and stuff. And this is a box set that is complete. It comes with everything you see there, the books, the maps, the two dice. And I just couldn't believe this because this thing looks like you could buy it out of the store today. And what I found out is that the guy who uh, brought this in, I felt kind of old because I remember this stuff like yesterday, and it turns out it's the guy's son that brought it in. So here's Day of the Octopus for your little adventure. The cards are still together. They didn't cut them up. So I remember cutting mine up so we could uh, hand them out. These are the characters that you would play in all their stats so you could play the game. A campaign book which kind of helps you out with characters and you know explains how to play a little bit and the ranking system I mean this stuff was fun but it could get really uh, it could get really really uh, in depth if you will the character cards these things will punch out so you can place them on the map and they're complete came with the two what is that ten sided dice where are we at there we go and I remember having a wax crayon that came with this so you could color them in and get the numbers to show up because it was all one color, you know, and so. And this about broke my heart because, like I said, it was a guy's son that brought them in. It weren't his, so I'm kind of hoping he knows they're gone. But it's got all his uh, sheets here where he's just keeping track and keeping score. <laughs> and uh, this, Apparently this guy was serious about his gaming, man. It's just pages and pages and pages of him playing and uh, of course comes with the battle book and there's the map that's even got his original pen that he played with so it was kind of weird getting this man I feel like I raided some guy and it's probably all in my head you know but this stuff is like mint condition brand new so hello eBay if I get five bucks for it I'd be surprised unless there's somebody out there who wants to make an offer for some of this stuff because there's a lot more coming all right, and then this came out in 1990. This is probably for the advanced edition. This is a special campaign of the X-Men. This sucker is really thick. And uh, explains a little bit about what it is. But this thing has some amazing stuff in it. Okay, and like again, this is kind of, it's got some shelf wear, but it's still like new. Okay, we get the Marvel Super Heroes roster book. And this is just pages and pages of uh, characters, Master Mold. They all don't have pages, but it's like you could play pretty much anybody that was in the X-Men books up to 1990. There's Proteus, you know. Uh, Roulette, Sabretooth, Savage Land, Mutates, Sauron, uh, Chode, yeah, Storm, the Mohawk. I imagine those are stats when she didn't have powers or something. Um, of course, comes with the Flames of Doom. This is the uh, adventure, I assume. Uh, just great stuff and yes those are supposed to come apart you have the adventure you have the fold out map and again more maps to play so that was kind of cool to find um, campaign book kind of explains the rules and give you extra things uh, another adventure book that's in here uh, more maps more maps so I just thought that was just amazing to find with everything intact like that that just blew my mind and then I found another this this is a this is a you know mutating mutants this is an adventure you know a module to play the game with 
you know, back then you'd have, uh, for you guys who never did the role-playing games, you'd have a judge in this game, and then uh, they would go through that campaign book and fit out the maps, and they would set the scene for you, and you'd roll dice and figure out what you needed to do. Really good time, actually. And then here's something. <clears throat> this is a, a tune role-playing game. Apparently this is the master book. Um, the, apparently this is like the main book where you pretty much play with, you know, like you guys are cartoons. Nobody dies. And uh, these are companion books that you had to buy to expand the game. Tune Silly Stuff. Steve Jackson Games down there. I remember that name. And Son of Tune. Alright, so that was kind of cool. Uh, never heard of this, but apparently they had a role-playing game for everything. This is Pentagon Games. Comes with uh, three adventures in it, and you know, apparently it's military strategy. I assume. Uh, so, like I said, some of these games will get pretty complicated and stuff. So, uh, you know, games, general ways to play. Looks like it had pop-out stuff, so you can make it. Yeah, just interesting. Don't know a lot about it. And then we got Mercenary, Spies, and Private Eyes Adventure Module, Raid on Ralhapar, or whatever. I don't know. There's all kinds of role-playing games coming out for a while, but apparently, you know, in this one looks like you're just a bunch of mercenaries. No idea. And then this is from TSR Games, but I think this was the 70s. I don't think this went very far, but I could be, you know, wrong. It's a role-playing game of the Wild Wild West called Boot Hill. Okay, and I have no idea. I'm assuming this is the... Uh, it's got brawling charts and stuff. You know, I guess, you know, if you're going to be a cowboy, you got to be able to be the fastest gun in the West. Fastest guns that ever lived. Apparently there was ways to roll for that and stuff. So, uh, you know, kind of cool. And right here is uh, BH3. Apparently it's a uh, ballots and bullets. Apparently you got a Western you can play role playing. And then uh, apparently there was a company called ICE, I-C-E. No idea what that stands for. But apparently there was actually a J.R.R. Tolkien Middle-Earth game to play, a fantasy role-playing game. Which is kind of ironic because Dungeons & Dragons was really, you know, pretty much they tried to make Lord, you know, Lord of the Rings campaign games. And they actually came out for them. But this whole little magazine is nothing but Shalob's Lair. Uh, that's the, I think that's how you say it, Shalob, Shalob. Anyway, you know, it's the spider that everybody thought killed um, um, Frodo. So... And, uh, you know, just, you know, just maps in the canyons that lives in the mountains, so. Uh, I know what this, what the idea with this was, apparently the guy mailed it, and apparently all they did was stick an address on there and mail it to him, but it's Dragon's Horde. I'm going to assume, since he's doing all this role-playing and stuff, it, uh, I mean, it's on pulp print. No idea what this is, man. But it talks about broadsores and, uh, Blue Max. I don't know what this is. Apparently it looks like it's some kind of, uh, Looks like it's uh, Dragon's Horde is some kind of uh, catalog to order out of. Because he has stuff marked in here he wanted to buy for fantasy adventures and stuff like that. So, who knows. Then he had a few more catalogs in there. 30-sided dice. Gaming tables. Uh, this, I think this is like from 1980 or something. Which cracks me up. 1982. You know, buy stuff for your role-playing. Uh, two mail-order hobby shop guides where he did... Uh, looks like he ordered stuff. You can order anything from TS... You know... Up there, if you look, there's Marvel superheroes, the Indy Jones games, just whatever's role playing. You can order it, order your dice out of here, uh, and then we get to the Dungeons and Dragons stuff, right? I about flipped out, man. This is like the old Dungeons and Dragons guide. This came, this is from 1981. Apparently, more majority of this stuff is from 1981. This is what the dungeon master would set up so he could see these stats, so he didn't have to have the dungeon master's guide. And this is what the players would see. You know, he'd be hiding behind that, rolling his dice and stuff. And, of course, they had, like, a few tables, you know, on the back of it for the players. Uh, Best of Dragon Magazine. I think these are from the late 70s, late early 80s. Dragon Magazine was a companion magazine that would help enhance your game for Dungeons & Dragons and have articles and talk about things. Uh, had, you know, the Sorcerer's Scroll where it had, like, little stories in it as well. Uh, they have new charts that you could use if you wanted to during your campaigning. Uh, and then this one, I gotta look this up. This is volume five, the best of. And these best of are usually would pull stuff out of Dragon Magazine from the magazines that were out of print. Dragon Magazine started in the 70s. I don't know when it ended. I had a few growing up. But this one's still sealed. Never been touched. It was $4.50. So that's kind of cool. 
All right, and then we have something I've never seen. This is a Dungeons and Dragons game supplement, Books of Marvelous Magic. Uh, Gary Gygax was the big man there, and apparently this is nothing but books of magic items you can get and put in your, you know, give put in your campaigns that you came up with and stuff, your modules. Then I found 19, 19 um, modules of uh, dungeon modules. These are the actual adventures, right? And there's no way I could have been a dungeon master because, like, I flipped through these. I can't make head and tail out of them. But they all had uh, numbers, and they had a campaign. This is A2. And then, you know, as you can see here on the back, they'd have campaigns. They'd have separated by letter and number. So as your characters went through these adventures, um, you guys gain level to tell you to go up. Like, this one starts out, this is A2, and it's for levels 4 through 7 for characters and stuff like that. So... A1 was probably for characters 1 through, you know, levels 1 through 3. You know, you gain levels with experience and treasure and stuff. And uh, it come with maps, great art. Bill William, Willingham, Bill Willingham, is that his name? The guy who draws fables and writes fables. He actually, uh, there's a, you can probably find some of these modules where he did uh, work in them. But, uh, yeah, here's the maps and stuff and campaigns and monsters and stuff. Anyway, here's Dungeon Module A2, Secret of the Slaver Stockade. Uh, let's put these beside me. B2, Dungeon Module B, B2, Keep, Keeper of the Borderlands. That one's kind of beat up, but it's alright. Uh, B3, Palace of the Silver Princess. And a lot of these came out like in the 70s, but these are from 81 and stuff. They would, uh, you know, kind of reproduce them and stuff. And like, you'd always have a chart if you wanted to do a campaign, uh, where the adventure continues. Whoop, shook the camera. Okay. B4, The Lost City, great art on these, Horror on the Hill, and then this was a very popular one that I, when we were playing, I remember playing some of these and stuff, this is where they brought out the Dark Elves and the Drow Elves, okay, that's, this is D1 and D2, they actually just took two, two of the original games and put them into one, and uh, Descent into the Depths of the Earth, which led to this one, which is just amazing, because uh, I remember playing this one and being blown away. Dungeon Module D3, Vault of the Drow by Gary Gygax. Gygax? I don't know. Anyway, it's, it brought out the Dark Elves, the Drow Elves, and everybody went nuts for them. And Dungeons and Dragons, I remember they had like different settings or worlds I never quite understood because, you know, I was like 13 playing this stuff. But I think these took place in the world of Greyhawk, and then later on they came out with the world of Forgotten Realms. And I never understood if they were completely new worlds or anything. This is against the Giants. They took three campaigns and put them into one. G1, G2, G3. Uh, which is, I don't know if I remember that one. Oasis of the White Palm. I remember doing this one. This is I4. This is when we come into 83 and 80s and they got a slicker design. Uh, papers became crisper. They got a better art in them. And they became a little bit easier to follow. They kind of simplified things just a tad. And I don't remember anybody complaining. Usually when people complain, they get mad at them. I5, Lost Tome of Martek. A Secret of Bone Hill. This is L1. It's another campaign. 1981. M1, Blizzard Pass. No idea about this one. It's for the basic set, though. There's a basic and an advanced. That's kind of cool. Uh, I think this was pretty cool. I think we played this one. Queen of the Demon Web Pits. Giant Spiders. Which is always cool. Yeah, look at that. Look at that art. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. Dungeon Module 3, uh, Expedition of the Barrier Peaks, level 8 through 12. Gary Guy Jackson did this one, so it's probably really good. Yeah, this one I used to play. This one actually has two books, and I don't know if I'll sell this one or not, because it came with aliens all of a sudden. I remember because you would have the adventure, and then you would have this book that was just pages and pages that were numbered so you can actually show the players when they get to that part of the adventure and it actually has uh, some robots uh, inside of there giant mushrooms and dungeons and dragons stuff but they had some things in here that just I remember playing this and looking over it over and over and I drew these pictures over and over from this very heavy metal like um, Looks like they had some dinosaurs in there. I mean, they just threw everything in this one. It just kind of got weird. Whoops, shook the camera again. But where are those guys at? 
you know, every now and then you'd have somebody hit their spot with their art. Plants, animals, monkeys, four-armed freaks. That's yeah, a three-armed freak. Oh, where are they at? Yeah, starting at the robots, there's a boxer one. I remember drawing this stuff. That's the kind of stuff I would start drawing over and over. And I love this thing because it had the heart over it. Yeah, some kind of fencer there with the fencing mask. But yeah, just cool stuff. And that went with the module. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, that's a very cool find. I'll put that to the side. That's a piece of childhood. All right. Lost Tech Caverns of uh, whatever this word is. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah, art started getting better. This is 82. Yep, feels like a thick one, too. Sinister Secrets of Salt Marsh. And this is kind of cool because it was an adventure to the United Kingdom. And they started out like it's a horror movie. Like castles and bats, Dracula, vampires, stuff like that. Very creepy stuff. Danger at a Droon Water. I think I played this one. Forgotten Temple of uh, Therdazun. Which is very cool. Maps got better. Better maps and stuff. Isle of Dread. A wilderness adventure for characters. Very cool. Yeah, that's Bill William work. Here's the signature. For I think it's before he went to Comic Con and did the elementals and stuff. He was working for TSR. I think it's the same guy. Master of the Desert Nomads, David Cook. And then we get to these. These are hardback books. I'll probably end up keeping these. Theme Folio. These were uh, creatures of the malevolent and benign. I'm very tired. And, uh, you know, I remember just hearing about this book, but it's got some nasty, nasty monsters in there with their stats that you can come in and load up and play. Remember, there's like a throat leech, a leech, yeah, a throat leech that looked like a twig in the water, and if you even swallow a bit of it, it would get in your throat, collapse on the back of your throat, swell up, until eventually it choked you. And then we got the monster manual, which everybody should have. Just, I mean, just, these things were just really cool to read. They had so many monsters and stuff on them. But here was the real find: deities and demigods. Because this is the first edition that came out. Um, sadly enough, a couple months ago, I thought I was getting this, but I got the first, I got the second edition that came out. The difference between them is that deities and demigods. This would, uh, you know, pick your gods by class, you know, or whatever by theology and stuff. You'd have your Amer they, this thing would divide them up into the American Indians, uh, Arthur and uh, uh, King Arthur and his heroes, the Babylonian mythos. Central America, Chinese, but then it gets you get down here where it says Cthulhu, the Cthulhu mythos. This was what H.P. Lovecraft's estate sued them over. They had a whole section in here on Cthulhu and his monsters based on his works. And when they found out about it, they sued them and they had to remove it. And then they republished it without it in the second edition. And they look exactly the same unless you open them up and you look for the Cthulhu. You know, it's right before you get to the Egyptian stuff. But this is the Cthulhu HP Lovecraft stuff that you can put into your campaigns. Um, where is Cthulhu? He should be the first one. Yep. There he is. The stats for Cthulhu. Anyway, I was really glad to see that. Alright guys, like I said, I'm going to put some of that stuff on eBay. And I was really surprised to find it. So, you know... If anybody sees anything they want, give me a PM and we'll work out a deal if you're into that stuff. Okay, later.